If you've ever broken a chisel or chipped a blade, you know the real pain isn't the damage, it's regrinding that bevel from scratch. This jig fixes that. No bench grinders that leave hollow grinds, no sharpening stones that take forever to reshape steel. Just a clean, repeatable way to reset your edge geometry. And if you have a thin belt sander, you probably have everything else you need. Let's get started. The materials that you'll need for this are some plywood, as well as a T-track, but really all of this can be made with probably things that you already have in your garage. All the tools and the materials that you'll need, the dimensions, everything, will be on the website, which will be in the description. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna build a base plate that will fit on the top of our strip sander. I'm just gonna take the base off of mine and attach it to the bottom, but I wanna make sure that this edge lines up parallel with this edge. And I kind of figured it out with a couple speed squares. Line this one up against the front and just check to see if I'm flush and I am, so it looks good. I'll go ahead and take this off. I wanna measure in three and a half inches on one side. If I center this on the top, I'm going to need to cut out about this to this based on my square pattern right here. I'm gonna go ahead and set my marking gauge to an inch. And the back side of the marks that I made, I'll flip this over and add my inch across here like this. If I take my platform and put it on the back, this is going to line up like that. So what I need to do now is to center this on this block, and I think it's about a half of an inch on either side. And with this set in place, I can add a mark, and this is what I'll be needing to cut out in order for this to slide on top. We'll set our marking gauge to one and seven eighths. And I'll go ahead and make a mark across here. We'll take this to the table saw now and we're gonna cut out a groove. I plan on using a T-track in here because it's metal. I don't have to worry about it expanding and contracting like wood. And it's gonna give me a lot less friction when it slides in the track. But it's up to you how you wanna do this. I'll make my cuts until this fits right inside on the top. And making my cuts, I will be wanting to move forward this way. So I wanna have a, a ridge right inside of here that's closer to the slot that we made. With my prototype, you can see that I've added some strips to the bottom of this and just makes it easy for me to be able to attach it like that. I can take it on and off without having to add some kind of knob or screw to the bottom of this. So right now we're gonna cut these strips out and these are gonna be a half inch by half inch, so we're just gonna to go to the table saw and make a really quick square dowel. I've got the table saw set at a half inch away from the blade, as well as the blade being a half of an inch. So I'm gonna make a cut, flip it, make another cut, and then my square dowel should magically pop up at the other end. Sometimes it pops out, sometimes it doesn't, but we've got an exactly half inch by half inch square dowel. To trap the square, I'm gonna make a mitered angled box, but you don't have to do this. As you can see with my prototype, I just kind of attached pieces around it and it worked fine. If I check to see how well I did, I actually didn't do too bad. I need to glue this now. I've added a rubber band around the entire thing and I'm gonna to try to sneak some glue in, just let it sit here before I do anything else. I'll let it dry with the base inside of it, just to keep things squared up. And now for the moment of truth, and we're good. This fits on here like this. This will go right over the top. Now the most important part of this is obviously gonna be the front. These two pieces have to line up together on the front. They need to be flush. I'll add a little bit of glue to the top. Again, the most important part is gonna be this front end here. We'll come back in a little while and take these off and. We'll check to make sure that I did everything right. Now with everything cut out, and I did need to move over just a little bit because it wasn't fitting right, this fits on and it's ready to go. My track slides in here and we're ready for the cradle part. The cradle consists of three parts. We've got the fence, we've got our back supports here, which are at a 25 degree angle, and we've got what will rest our blade against. I'm gonna set my marking gauge to 5 eighths. 
Now I'll set this to a half of an inch and I'll draw a line that intersects it. To add my last mark, I wanna take the widest blade that I have and I need to add that to the inch for my belt. My widest blade is two and a quarter inches, belt's an inch, so that makes it three and a quarter inches, but I'm gonna jump up to three and a half inches. And because I started at five eighths inches over here, I'm just gonna round it to four inches total. And this is my opening right here that I need to cut out with the bandsaw. Now we need to make the 25 degree braces, but first what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in three quarters of an inch on either side of a longer stretched out piece. I'm gonna set this to three quarters of an inch and I'll come to the edge, draw my line. Next, we can flip this down. We'll set our marking gauge to one and 17 30 seconds. I'm gonna mark each side and now I'll connect the corner with the line I just drew. If your stock is three and five eighths inches wide, then this will be a 25 degree angle right here. We need to cut this out on the table saw, but we wanna make sure that we're not cutting on the line at all. We'll come back and clean that up later on. My pieces are gonna line up like this, but I don't wanna have this giant corner on the end, so I'm just gonna cut it off now. Now the nice thing about plywood is that it's always oddly stacked. So this piece has 11 different layers in it. So what I can do to find the exact center is just count in six. And this one here is gonna be my center, right there. If you've ever worked with plywood, you know that drilling into the edge is the worst way to, to attach something. But in this situation, I'm kind of stuck. So I'm gonna use a little bit of a wider bit where the threading of the screw just barely reaches over. And you can see that I can even twist this in myself. I might add epoxy later on if I need to, but it really needs to be a lot looser because otherwise it'll just spread it apart as you try to screw it in. With both holes drilled out, I can add my track and just a regular standard track should work fine for this. What we need to do now is cut off both of these ends. Now I need to glue my fence to this, but the problem is that this is a very difficult angle to actually clamp down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to drill a hole through the front. I'm gonna add two screws, but really they're only there to clamp it. I still wanna use glue and then remove the screws when I'm done. I added a little bit of glue earlier and that's just to glue size this a little bit, which just fills the pores up on the plywood. And I can stick this on here and add my screws. So first I'm gonna add some glue. We'll give this some time, come back, and we'll add our last final strip. While that's drying, I'm gonna come back to this piece and I wanna cut off each end so that this is square. But I wanna make sure that I have a little bit of meat on this, so maybe about an eighth of an inch from the corner uh, to where I cut it. That's the first piece. On my second piece, I wanna go in about a half of an inch and do the same thing. So I've got these two pieces, which I'm gonna save for later, and they're very important. To create the ledge that our blade will slide up against, I'm gonna use a piece of solid stock, and I need to cut off about an eighth of an inch. So I've got my thin strip jig here, and I'm going to do that now. And now I'm just gonna cut this off at about two inches, maybe a little bit less. To attach your ledge, it obviously needs to be exactly 90 degrees with the blade, otherwise you're gonna have a skew and you don't want that. You also wanna make sure that when you attach your fence, that the belt is as close to it as possible. With mine, you can see I've got this little overhang and the belt is just slightly over. I wanna make sure that the belt is right over that ledge. With mine, I found that right about here is gonna work out. It'll go on like that. And to make sure that I'm at a 90, I'm gonna add my square like this, clamping it down. And because of this angle, I just took one of my rough pieces and I'm going to use it to clamp and hope that that works. We'll give this some time to dry and we'll come back to it. My favorite part about this entire project is that I can rotate this to get the angle that I need. So it makes it very easy to be able to do several different angles. But how do we quickly make those angles? Let me show you. These pieces that we cut off easily slide in here and then fit to the angle that I need. And then I come in here and I lock my table 
and I'm ready to go. It's really that simple. So right now I'm gonna show you how you can make these set pieces. It's very, very easy. So we're gonna go back to the original pieces that we cut off from the other piece and we're gonna to go to the smallest piece here. Just like before, we're gonna to go to one in 17, 30 seconds, and then add our mark. And this will give us a 25 degree set. Now, in order to get a 30 degree set, we're gonna set our marking gauge to one in 13 sixteenths. And this will give us our 30 degree set. And finally, we'll come to the last piece, and we'll set this to two and three thirty seconds of an inch. And if you wanted to go to a 40 degree bevel, you would go to two and 11 30 seconds. So those are the measurements you're gonna need. Again, if you're using a three and five eighths inch block. And finally, because nobody wants to put their fingers right next to a spinning belt, we're gonna make a push stick for this. I've got a piece of stock here that's about a quarter inch thick. It's about five and a half inches long by about one and a half inches wide. I'm gonna set my sander to at least 35 degrees, but if you can, go 40 degrees. Now what I'm gonna do is just slowly grind this down until I get an angle at the end of this. Now when it's time to use it, this will slide right up next to our blade. You'll use it by putting pressure on this side and then using your hand to slide it on this side. But let me give you a really quick demonstration. To get started, we need to get a few things ready. First, grab a bowl of water or a damp rag. You'll be checking the blade's temperature regularly and cooling it off between passes. Second, this piece of metal back here, which is called a platen, needs to be parallel to the front edge of our table. I've taken off the belt so that I can use a couple squares to check to make sure that it is parallel. If yours is not parallel, there should be a couple screws in the back that you can loosen to move it around and then make sure that you tighten it up really good. After that, we'll slide the belt back on. When the belt does go back on, make sure that it's flush to the platen in the back. As for the abrasive, I'm using an old worn down ceramic belt. It's seen much better days, but that's what makes it perfect for this. It still cuts, but it doesn't leave deep grooves and I'm gonna have to polish out later on. So the finer or more worn your belt is, the better it will work for this kind of bevel reset. You have to remember that we're not trying to reshape the blade quickly. We're trying to do it accurately and cool. If you push too hard, you'll not only generate heat, but you'll flex the table or jig slightly and that can throw off your geometry. On my belt sander, the table slides front to back. I push mine as far forward as it will go for this jig. Now the jig base slides on and the cradle drops right into place. I've got a really bad edge here on my chisel. At some point, I think I tried to sharpen this with my bench grinder, but uh, it doesn't look good. I think maybe I even chipped it out at some point. If I put a square on it, you can really see how bad it is. But I just wanna come in here, use a marker, and get that tip so that it's square. Now I'm gonna mark the entire face with a marker because I wanna watch to see what I'm removing. And now before I do anything else, I'm gonna set this at 30 degrees. And that's good right there. What I'll do now is put my chisel against the ledge and then rest it against the belt. And then on the other side, I'll put my push stick. I'm gonna pull up just a little bit and then turn it on and see if I'm engaged with the belt. Now I've already done it a little bit and you can see that I'm starting to work my way up the blade. The edge is not too hot right now, so I'm not really worried about it. I'm gonna keep going. And there's a little bit more grinding and you can see that I'm moving my way up. So I'm doing pretty good with this so far. And here we go with our brand new angle. I'll bring up the before so we can compare this, but this is a really good looking blade. Of course, this is not quite done yet. I'll leave a video at the end of this video so that you can watch a method that will get you a razor sharp chisel. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know how you'd improve this in the comments. I'm always learning too. Huge thanks to my patrons who help make things like the website make sense. Don't forget to check it out. You'll find all the dimensions and details in the descriptions and remember to keep making things.